Beloveds, we have gathered on this special day. It is a special day to us as we come to join with the family and we ask everybody to reverence this moment as the family have their part in the home going of one of the greatest persons that you could find in this world today. She was so great that the Lord gave her 113 years. to let her light shine that the world may see what happens when you live as or like she lived. What a great light she was shining in a dark world. She will never be forgotten. We will miss her. Her praise to God And she was not ashamed to let the world know whose side she was on. She was one of God's children. And she lived accordingly.
We want to thank our morticians who have done an excellent job thus far. And I now bring before you uh, one that I've known for many years. Matter of fact, uh, I had him ordain. God is using him and has used him down through the years. He's in the right position to do what he has been called upon to do for us today and for the family. And I speak of none other than Bishop Odie Hines, one that uh, is capable of doing what we need to do. And I would like to say also at this time that uh, uh, we have a time that we have to do this, but I believe that all of us who have gathered on behalf of Mother Magloin, that we will recognize our purpose of being here as we receive this servant of the Most High God, and that we will go through the order of worship as the family has asked for us to do. And I believe that we will carry it out. And I bring to you this servant of God, uh, Bishop Odie Hines. He is now the presider of this occasion. Let us receive him, the Reverend Dr. Uh, Bishop. Now he has graduated and gone a step higher, Bishop Odie Hines. Let us receive him. God bless you. Thank you, Dr. White. And certainly, as always, I do give honor and reverence to Almighty God and certainly to my pastor, the Reverend Dr. Rudolph White, who is the esteemed and eminent pastor of this great church, and to the bereaved family that I am feel I'm a part of. I have Mother Ida uh, Sweeter, that's in my church, Deacon North Street, are here than the rest of the grand, great grand. So my assignment and is to carry out the order of service. So I greet all of you all in that precious, that powerful, that proliferated, in that preeminent name, my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And thank God for the late uh, Virginia, my Lauren, who has been very special to all of us. So I've been asked to follow the program and for those of you who are on the program who will be bringing uh, remarks, we ask that you will limit your remarks to two minutes. Uh, we certainly want to ask uh, all of you who have uh, cell phones, I've been asked to, uh, to remind you to silent your cell phone so there will be no interruption as we begin this homegoing celebration. This is a celebration. Can I give 
someone to give me a hand praise. Give the Lord a hand praise. A celebration of life. And so we thank God for a celebration of life. I've been asked to follow the program. We would have now the uh, prelude by evangelist uh, Stephen Henry. Open him by the uh, New Southern Rock Ensemble. And then the reading of the scripture, the Old Testament by Reverend Joe Phillips. Uh, New Testament will be read by Deacon Robert Wilcott. And then prayer of comfort be by none other than Deacon Jesse Hemaway. God bless you. transition. Amen. Mother McLaurin, she was mother to all of us. Yes, yes. She didn't mind you calling her mother. Yes. I enjoyed her company. She sang them old, old hymns. She remembered way back when. I got a trouble remembering last year's comedy at that time. She had no problems at all bringing it all up forward. We thank God 
for life well lived. Psalms 23 was one of her favorite readings. And by my book, Psalms 23 reads as follows. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley in the shadows of death, I shall fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comforteth me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemy. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup hmm, runneth over. Surely, surely, goodness and mercy mm, mm, Goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. 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 Good morning, everyone. And as always, to God be all the glory. Our New Testament scripture reading this morning will be coming from 2 Timothy chapter 4, beginning at the fifth verse. But why is it thou all in all things endure afflictions? Do the work of an evangelist. Make full proof of thy ministry. For I am now ready to be offered. And the time of my, de my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. Which the Lord, the righteous judge, She'll give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. Once again, our New Testament scripture reading has come from 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 5 through 8. May the Lord continue to be a blessing to the reading, hearing, as well as application of his holy word. And that it will continue to bring joy and comfort to our souls today, henceforth, and forevermore. Amen. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, the Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, is the maker and creator 
of all mankind. You rule and super rule of both heaven and earth. You're the first and the last, the beginning and the end. In other words, you everything that we need. If it's bread, you got it. If it's water, you got it. If it's a roof over our head, you got it. And we come today, Lord, to say thank you. Thank you for where you brought us, how you brought us. You brought us through seen and unseen danger. And then we thank you for another night's sleep. How you watched over us and kept us safe all night long. Then early this morning, you took the time out and you woke us up. Don't know how you did it. Don't know whether you call our names or touch it with the finger of love. But one thing we do know, that you woke us up this morning. Still clothes in our right mind. Having the use of these, our limbs. Speaking of our immortal tongue. Able to place on our own garments. Without an aid of a sister. Got up and we took on a bite of bread and a cool drink of water. Moved across the room and walked to the room and we looked and there stood another brand new day. A day that we never seen before. And as time moved, we'll never see this day again. So we ask you, Lord, to take us through this day. As you did on other days. For we don't know what lies ahead. Because you made this day. This day. And you put into this day. Whatever was necessary. So I just want to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. For your joy. Thank you. For your peace. Thank you for your love. We thank you for everything. We thank you for bringing us from the rocking of our cradle to behold this divine, this divine moment. We thank you for your grace and mercy that brought us through. And uh, We'll live in these moments and because of you. We want to thank you and praise you too. Your grace and Lord your mercy have brought us through. So we thank you. And uh, if you're not too busy and if you don't mind stop by here just a little while. Somebody's heart is heavy. Somebody's confused in their mind. But Lord, I know you're the heart fixer and you're mind regulator. And we want to say thank you. We're so glad for another chance and opportunity that we can call on your name. I know you heard me in days in past and gone. And you said if I need you, I could call you again. And as I look around this morning, uh, there's a needy time. We need to call on your name. For uh, there's power in your name. Holy Ghost power, sanctified power, healing power. Deliverance power is all in your name. And Lord, we come to say thank you. If you don't mind, 
Look at all in this family. Because they need you. And they can't get along without you. We ask you to bless mankind. As far as he sell, travel over the earth. And as far as he sail, over the deep blue seas. So Lord, uh, when that time come that we must fill our water green. Live somewhere. Live somewhere. In the land where it never grow. So we thank you. And when it's all over, all over, give us a home somewhere in your kingdom where Job declared that the wicked would cease from trouble and all our soul will be at rest. These are all other blessings. These are all other blessings. We ask in your name. In your name. In your name. I'm sure that this is the way that the late Virginia McLaurin would have her homegoing celebration to be. We thank God for all of those who have participated thus far, and uh, especially uh, Deacon uh, Hemaway. God bless you. Thank you so much. Let's give the Lord a praise for that fervent prayer. God bless you. Prayers of the righteous shall avail as much. Thank you, uh, Reverend Joe Phillip, for the reading of the Old Testament. Thank you, Deacon Robert Wilcock, for the reading of the New Testament. Now we'll be favored by a music selection by the New Southern Rock Ensemble in that order. And then after that, we would have acknowledgement by church uh, resolution by... Sister Wood will come and do the acknowledgement for us in that order. God bless you.
church. I've come to share with you some of the acknowledgments of uh, condolences, expressions of love. Of course, uh, we know we were in the presence of a phenomenal woman, so there are lots. So I do beg your indulgence, but we'll just read just a few, but we do have a few letters that we need to acknowledge today. Okay. The Lord is close to all who call on him, and that's Psalms 145, 18. As you walk through this time of loss, may you know that the Lord walks with you. He will comfort you. This is from Janice and family. Mm -hmm. 
with heartfelt sympathy to my friend. My caring thoughts are with you now and for all the days to come. And this is uh, Janice and the Stewart family. House of Representatives, Washington, D.C., 20515. Eleanor Holmes Norton, District of Columbia, November 18th, 2022. To the family of Miss Virginia McLaurin, my sincerest condolences to you all on the loss of your beloved Miss Virginia McLaurin. We will never forget the joy of seeing her dance with the Obamas. May we never forget that Ms. McLaurin raised awareness about the inability of senior citizens to get a non-driver ID in D.C. Her actions led to an initiative that continues to assist many D.C. seniors today. Ms. McLaurin lived a life dedicated to helping others as a foster grandmother and mentoring special needs students with reading and social skills. We will deeply miss Ms. McLaurin. During this time of bereavement, it is my hope that you celebrate the remarkable life that she lived. May the memory of her impact on our community and the nation bring joy and peace to your hearts. Sincerely, Eleanor Holmes Norton. In loving memory of Virginia McLaurin, the DC Ward for many commission on aging is honored to celebrate the life of an angel, Ms. McGender McLaurin. Her life was one of longevity, but also one of such significant substance. She was a strong, independent woman who, though small in stature, a four foot 11 frame, was very significant in important values. She was the matriarch of Washington, D.C. She was loved by so many for over eight decades in the Petworth community in which she lived. Her life was one of dedicated and committed volunteerism. Appreciation will never be exhausted for her volunteer work with United Planning Organization, the Foster Grandparents Program, Sharp Health School, and Roots Public Charter School. She was so lively and full of joy and smiles. Ms. McLaurin was our honored guest along with Mayor Muriel Bowser at one of our monthly commission meetings in celebration of her 110th birthday. It was an honor and a privilege to be in her presence. We will always cherish her memory. Ward 4, many commission on aging, Veronica Ingram Chairperson, November 23rd, 2022. Greater Good Samaritan Baptist Church. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye be also. John 14, one through three. Greater Good Samaritan Baptist Church expresses their deepest sympathy, sadness, and sorrow in the transition of your, pre of your precious loved one, the late Virginia McLaurin. In 2 Timothy 4, seven, it is saith, I have fought a good fight, I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. And not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. It is not how long you lived, but how you lived. The late sister Virginia McLaurin was loved by all whose path she crossed with her beautiful smile and her love for others. God loved her best and saw fit to call her home. We know that God does not make a mistake. If the late Sister Virginia McLaurin were here today, she would say, may the work I've done and the life I've lived speak for me. 
she will truly be missed. To Mother Ida Mae Streeter, Deacon Nora Streeter, and the Streeter McLaurin family, when you weep, we weep, and when you rejoice, we rejoice. Weeping might endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Just hold on to God's unchanging hand and look to the hills from whence cometh your help, knowing all your help cometh from the Lord. Prayerfully submitted by the order of Reverend Dr. Odie Hines, Senior Pastor, Deacon Nathaniel Bing III, Deaconate Ministry, Evangelist Betty Beard, Trustee Ministry, and all the members of Greater Good Samaritan Baptist Church. November 22, 2022, to the family of the late Sister Virginia McLaurin. Our hearts are saddened today by the passing of our member, Sister Virginia McLaurin. Sister Virginia McLaurin wanted to become a member of the missionary ministry, and she joined the ministry in 2018. She was 109 years old at the time. It was a blessing to have her join us. She was such a delightful and loving person with plenty of spunk. Sister Virginia McLaurin was indeed a gem. She exemplified all the characteristics of a missionary. She was caring and giving, and she always talked about the goodness of Jesus and how good he had been to her. The missionary ministry will hold the many memories we shared with Sister Virginia McLaurin in our hearts. She will truly be missed. Family, please look to the hills from whence cometh your strength during your time of sorrow. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. 2 Timothy 4, 7 through 8. With our deepest condolences, Sister Maddie Harrison, President, Missionary Ministry. Missionary Ministry, Sister Montalyn Smith, Vice President. Sister Carolyn Dudley, Secretary. Church of God of Prophecy, Mid-Atlantic Region, District 3, 5533 Livingston Road, Forest Heights, Maryland, November 25th, 2022. To the family of Mother Virginia McLaurin, precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his godly ones. Psalm 116, 15. We, the members of the Church of God of Prophecy, join you in sorrow on the passing of your loved one, Mother Virginia McLaurin. For years, she was an active member of the Church of God of Prophecy. Mother McLaurin joined the church under our founding father, Bishop John W. Woods, here in Washington, D.C. Under his leadership, she was a driving force in the furtherance of the growth and development of the church in the metropolitan DC area. At one point, she secured a second job with the singular purpose of raising funds to purchase land upon which a future church was to be built. As was her intent, every cent she earned went towards that purpose. She was known for her frankness, her tone, tenor, and verbiage left nothing to be imagined or misinterpreted. <laughs> Her style was no nonsense, and she was about the business of the Lord. When she was too outspoken and even wrong, she was known to seek forgiveness from those she may have offended, but more importantly, God himself. She was a member who put her hands to the work of the Lord in every auxiliary. She considered it her reasonable service to do whatever it took to spread the good news of the gospel and building the kingdom. She successfully and regularly hosted programs featuring local quartets and other singing groups as fundraisers. She was professionally trained as an usher and was the usher board director under Bishop Benjamin Williams. As she aged and got close to 100, in consideration of her age, she was replaced in this role. This move hurt her to her soul. Her response as as long as I have breath, I will work in the house of the Lord. She was soon restored to her position <laughs> and continued in service 
where she provided professional training to all board members. She was sought out to usher numerous prestigious events throughout the District of Columbia in both the secular and the faith communities. Her joy was in the Lord and her exuberance and excitement was unmatched. All that she did was to the glory, honor, and praise to her Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Her signature song was, May the works I've done speak for me. She spoke loud and clear through her works. Her voice, shrilled and sometimes faltering, was memorable. It resonated with and touched the soul of countless, just as her presence commanded. She could be seen in her excitement, raising the chair in front of her and shouting, Hallelujah, the highest praise. With tears flowing and the Holy Spirit moving upon her, she made her confession of faith in the abundance of joy and the fullness of her faith in the Lord. She lived to live again. So she lived to hear the words, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. To God be the glory for a life well lived, an example for us all. Mother McLaurin's death is precious to the Lord. Her cares intensely about it. Although God blessed her to live here on earth 113 years, had, he had an even better gift for her. God had an eternal life with his son, Jesus Christ, to give her. And on November 14, 2022, God gave her that gift. Amen. Praise be the Lord. Amen. Note of thanks to Sister Renee Preston Taylor, District 3 historian, yours in Christ, Albert I. Chapman, Senior Bishop, District Supervisor. New Southern Rock Baptist Church, with all members of New Southern Rock, please stand if you're able to for our church resolution. New Southern Rock Baptist Church, 750 Buchanan Street, Northwest Washington, D.C., 2011. Church resolution honoring and commemorating the life and legacy of Mother Virginia McLaurin, age 113. November 25th, 2022. Where it has pleased the Heavenly Father to translate from earthly labors of life to the sweet rest and fellowship of the saints in heaven, our beloved member, Mother Virginia McLaurin, a super centenarian, affectionately known as Grandma, and Mother McLaurin on Monday, November 14th, 2022. And whereas we, the officers, members, ministers, and ministries of New Southern Rock Church wish to express our sincere condolences to Ida Mae Streeter, Felipe and Carla Cardoso, and the entire McLaurin family. Our hearts are with you as we gather to celebrate the blessed life and legacy of Mother McLaurin, a dedicated servant of God, a devoted missionary, mother, grandmother, great-grandmother, great-great-grandmother, foster grandmother, and a shining example of faithfulness to the heavenly call of God, Christ Jesus. As we remember Mother McLaurin's faithful service to the Lord, we are confident that like the Apostle Paul, her testimony would be, I have fought a good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. Now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award, will award to me on that day. 2 Timothy 4, 7 through 8. Mother McLaurin joined New Southern Rock Baptist Church on July 20th, 2008, under the leadership of our current pastor, Reverend Dr. Rudolph White. She was a dedicated and faithful member of the Carolina Club Ministry and Missionary Ministry. She was blessed with many spiritual gifts and talents that she used to glorify God and edify the body of Christ in her church and the community. In her daily living, she exhibited the fruit of the Holy Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, 
faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Her favorite scripture was the 23rd Psalm, and one of her favorite songs was, Nobody Can Turn Me Around. We are thankful for her countless contributions, both spiritually and financially. Mother McLaurin was an ordinary person doing extraordinary things. Some of her amazing accomplishments at age 100 plus years were a lifelong community service for over 20 years as a foster grandmother at Sharp Health School and Roots Public Charter School, making a difference in the lives of hundreds of youth in the DC public school. Gained national attention after a visit to the White House on February 18, 2016, to celebrate the annual Black History Month as a video of her dancing with President Barack Obama and First Lady Michelle Obama went viral on social media. Recipient of the President's Volunteer Service Award for Lifetime Achievement, Mother McLaurin leaves behind an outstanding legacy of commitment to serving her church and the community. The New Southern Rock Baptist Church family is mourning the absence of a great woman of God. We enjoyed listening to her stories and how she survived holding to her faith in God, being at the forefront of her life. We take comfort in knowing that her legacy speaks through her family, church, family, and the iconic fruits of her labor. As you walk through this valley of the shadow of death, find comfort in the sweet memories of your loved one and in the knowledge that God saw fit to so bless us for a season with such a great servant. Be it resolved to acknowledge the passing of our faithful and devoted member, supercentenarian and a devoted servant to God at New Southern Rock Baptist Church, Mother Mc Virginia McLaurin, and that a copy of this resolution will be given to the family and a copy kept in the church archives. Be at peace in the everlasting love of God, done by the order of New Southern Rock Baptist Church this 25th day of November 22nd, 2022, Reverend Dr. Rudolph White, Senior Pastor, Deacon Jesse Hemingway, Vice Chairman, Board of Deacons, Trustee George Boyle, Chairman, Board of Trustees, and in absence, the church clerk, Sister Patricia Womack. On behalf of the family, in case you don't get a personal greeting uh, today, they would just like to say uh, thank you. The family extends appreciation to everyone who has joined us today and to everyone who has reached out to offer their words of support and condolences. You might have a seat. Uh, Sister McLaurin was my little buddy and mostly because we were similar in statue. You know, in other words, we were both short. <laughs> so I used to always tell her that the best things come in small packages. And she was truly one of the best things that came in small packages. And I say to the family, uh, my sincere condolences, and thank you for having shared her with us these years. And I truly pray and hope that, particularly the youngsters, took advantage of your living history book, because that's what she was. To have loved and known somebody, somebody who's lived over 100 years, that's living history. God bless you, and thank you. Thank you so very much. I know that was a lot of reading for you, but you have got through it, so may God be praised. Let's give her a hand praise again. For Amen. Praise God. Now, I have a couple lists for reflection, and I'm going to work off of a list that may not be printed in your program. So for those of you who uh, follow the program, believe that even the person who is presiding over the program is to follow the program. Sometimes we're given different instruction, and it may alter from what you have. So I'm going to now call uh, Bishop Van Solomon, Church of God, a prophecy to come and to have remarks. And then also uh, Miss Irvin from the office of the mayor's uh, Bowser office. 
uh, in that order. And uh, I will now call uh, uh, Miss uh, Christmas uh, from the United Planner Organization, if you all can remember the order, and from the uh, Carolina Club Ministry, First Lady of this church, uh, Sue White, and then lastly, Trustee George Board, the chairman of the trustee board here at New Southern Rock Baptist Church, in that order. just here to just praise the Lord today um, and extend our condolences to the family. I am not Bishop Sullivan. I'm actually Bishop Chapman and you've already read my uh, letter that came from us at the Church of God of Prophecy. So I don't have very much more to say except I echo everything that everyone has been talking about. What a wonderful blessing God gave us. And she was with us so, so, so many years. And at the same time she was blessed to be here in life, God is going to bless her to be with his son for eternity. And we thank God for that and for what he's promised unto us too. God bless you all. This is the day that the Lord hath made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Family, this morning, we may be mourning, but it was raining. And I honestly believe that that's a sign that the angels in heaven, they were crying tears of joy. Because if you notice right now, the sun has come out because that was them opening up the gates to receive her soul. So let us rejoice on this day because this is an honor. On behalf of all Washingtonians, I wish to express my deepest condolences on the passing of your dear mother, grandmother, family, family member, and friend, Miss Virginia McLaurin. Born on March 12, 1909 in Shiraz, South Carolina, Virginia McLaurin began school a year early, which meant she did not hesitate walking five miles each way every day so that she could spend more time in the classroom. Mother Virginia's determination to better herself and those around her never wavered. She later moved to New Jersey where she worked as a tack welder in shipyards during World War II and finally Mother Virginia moved to Washington DC where she lived for the rest of her life. Here, she worked as a tailor at a laundromat and as a domestic worker for four different families. Still, her determination did not slow down. Mother Virginia joined the New Southern Rock Baptist Church where she continued her firm commitment to faith. Upon retiring, Mother Virginia's life did not slow down. She spent 24 years 24 years of her life volunteering for the UPO foster grandparent program through various schools and improved the lives of so many generations of children throughout her nearly quarter century of service. Mother Virginia was a staple of our Washington DC community and I am thankful for all that she did to better those around her and to bring joy to everyone she met, including famous, famous mostly President and Mrs. Obama. The true story of Washington, D.C. cannot be told without people like Mother Virginia McLaurin. She was a talented woman with a motivated and faithful spirit. I am deeply grateful for the work that Mother Virginia did to uplift those around her and for her two and a half decades as a foster grandparent to children in need. I am proud to join her family and friends in 
remembering Mother Virginia and honoring a life so very well lived. Mother Virginia's life was an amazing example of selflessness and commitment to community. Let her spirit be an inspiration to all. As you mourn, please rely on your strength, love, and support of your family and friends. Those we love do not go away. They walk beside us every day. And our beautiful Mother Virginia McLaurin leaves behind a tremendous legacy of light, love, faith, and that legendary ability to cut a rug in the most famous house in the world, which will not soon be forgotten. May her memory always be a blessing and a profound guide for each of you tomorrow and every day thereafter. To her beloved children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren, family members, friends, and to all who loved Mother Virginia, please know that you are in my thoughts and prayers during this difficult time. Your mayor, Mayor Muriel Bowser. Good morning. My name is Jessica Smith. I'm the interim director of the DC Department of Aging and Community Living. We are here today to offer our deepest condolences to all of you here, and thank you so much for allowing us to be a part of this celebration of life. At the Department of Aging, we work every day to dispel the myths and misconceptions of what it means to grow old. And our tagline is to encourage all of our seniors to live boldly. And I think I can say unequivocally that Ms. McLaurin worked every single day to defy what it meant to grow old and to truly live boldly. She is the poster child for living boldly and we will continue to remember her throughout the years. We'd like to prepare and award this plaque to the family members of Ms. McLaurin. And it reads as this. As the mayor of Washington, D.C., I have prepared this honorary certificate in memory of Ms. Virginia McLaurin. This tribute, along with messages of goodwill to all our other centenarians, confirm that your beloved family member was a true beacon of hope for Washingtonians. I am grateful for the many contributions that she made to our city and for showing all of us how to live boldly. Thank you so much. Greetings, everyone. I'm Cheryl Christmas, and I direct the UPL Foster Grandparent Program. Uh, greetings to the family members, Bishop Hines, New Southern Rock Baptist Church members, our foster grandparents and friends. I'm the director of the program, uh, for which Grandma McLaurin served for 24 years. I bring remarks on behalf of the foster grandparents unable to attend and those present here, which I'd now like to ask to stand. <laughs> Including grandma's granddaughter. <laughs> there is a reality about incredible longevity and vitality that stirs something deep in each of us. It is the wonder of possibilities. It's a, that word means something different to each of us, but it's the same emotion for us all. There comes a point in each of our lives that we accept certain possibilities no longer exist. Whether it was to be a superstar athlete, or Emmy Award actress, the list goes on. Whatever it is for you, the day comes when you consciously accept the possibility no longer exists. But Grandma Virginia McLaurin challenged that reality that you were so sure of. 
Maybe we can all live to 113. Maybe we can touch the lives of hundreds of children. Or we can all have that smile and that laughter that set the world on fire. Or maybe we can all just dance. <laughs> Grandma believed that all children deserve unconditional love. And when they were given love, nurturance, and guidance, the possibilities for their future were endless. As a foster grandparent, she toiled alongside her fellow foster grandparents to ensure that each child they touch sees their value, their intelligence, and most importantly, their possibilities. Grandma Virginia McLaurin exemplified the spirit of volunteerism in every step she took. She shined a light, a bright light, on how volunteerism is good food for the soul, the mind, and the body. We of the UPO Foster Grandparent Program are committed to her legacy of service. We will continue to honor her memory by working to help every child we serve with unconditional love and to help unlock their possibilities. Rest in peace, sweet grandma. Job well done. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Sue White, president of the Carolina Club of this church. Will members of the Carolina Club please stand? Thank you. We come to mourn, but also to give thanks to celebrate the life and legacy of our dear friend, Sister Virginia McLaurin. If there is one verse of scripture which captures her best, it is perhaps the description of a gracious woman in the final chapter of the book of Proverbs. It says, strength and dignity are her clothing and she laughs at the time to come. Sister McLaurin joined the Carolina Club in the summer of 2009. She stated that the reason she was interested in becoming a member was because of all the good things that the Carolina Club was doing for the community. For instance, the annual board or baby shower Adopt a Family for Christmas, the bike, drive giveaway, the bike Giveaway Drive, the Food Basket Giveaway for Needy Families. If I were to select a theme for saying goodbye to my dear, dear friend, Sister Meg Lauren, whom I pray that I will see again soon, so whom I pray that I will see again. Strength, dignity, and praise. Three great gifts, which was part of her life. And this is why we're here again to celebrate this great woman of God. Her strength was expressed best through the quality of time spent with children and her family, children in various school systems, which had been a precious gift and a blessing to many. She was both inspirational and refreshing at whatever she did. She was a shining example of Love thy neighbors as thyself. 
She was committed to serving others for the joy of living. Dignity, there was nothing remote or distance about her own sense of dignity. Praise, as believers, we should praise the Lord because his love is everlasting and he is able to do all things is one that she would tell us all. She said that this is why she loves him so much and that all of her days of her life was being planned to see his face. He is, a, he is righteous and he is love. Many happy times, there were more happy times in her life as a member of the Carolina Club was when she would smile at the thought that after Sunday worship service, she would be able to meet with some of her other beloved friends here at the church and feast at a dinner after the service. I would like to leave you with, this is a remembrance of her by John Milton, and it says, Grace was in her steps, heaven in her eye, in every gesture, dignity and love. May the Lord bless the family. We thank you for allowing the Carolina Club to join you in celebration of a great life well lived. We will miss her very, very much. And for now, Sister Meg Lauren. Good night, and I love you more. Thank you. Sister, Matt is coming now. Uh, Dick and Norris, if you wait just for a few minutes, uh, let me call uh, Sister Maddie Harrison. If you're here, then come now and bring remarks from the missionary ministry. And let me, while she's coming, let me thank all of you all who has brought remarks, even from uh, Mayor Bowser office from the United Planning Organization. Thank you so very much. Uh, such inspirational words that you brought to us today. And then also thank you, Sister uh, Sue White, First Lady of this church, and uh, the remarks you brought. And then Trustee Board also will come after Sister Maddie Harrison in that order. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. God bless you. Uh, Trustee Board, are you here? Uh, all right. All right. Give an honor to God, Pastor White, and my friend. Bishop Hines, and Mother McLaurin family. Good afternoon. Mother McLaurin was very special to me because me and the van driver, is the other van driver here? Oh, he's in the back. We have a special pickup time for her. Please do not come out until we call you. Please don't come out. We get there, Mother McLaurin is sitting on the stoop. Oh my God, I said, now she been, how long has she been sitting out here? You know? And then we took it, take our time and take, bring her down the steps and get in the van also. And she was 
was ready to go home, she was the last one to pick up and the first one to drop off because she lived in the area. But also, she chose to ride with me and my wife to drop off the other, other, kid, other, 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 other parishioners. And then after that, oh, what are we going to eat for lunch? <laughs> but I want to say to the, parish, to the uh, mother, McLaurin family, she touched my life as well she has touched yours. And I know your heart. And God will get you through this. May God bless you. And may good, thank you for the opportunity to let me say a few words. Thank you. God bless you, trustee. Thank you so very much. Uh, we have with us, and they're not asked to make remarks, but the uh, Globetrotters, uh, they're here. And uh, Julian... Uh, McClurkin, if you just stand and wave your hand, you flew in, I understand, you just got off the plane, God bless you, God bless you. You sure you don't want to just say something quick from where you are? God bless you. God bless you. That speaks volume in terms of her love and outreach. Uh, the reason why Deacon North Street, I saved you for last, we always say we'll say the best for last. Uh, <laughs> for, for, for the 30 years, I pastored the Greater Good Samaritan Baptist Church, and I think you need to know this. I have in my church uh, the daughter, uh, mother out of uh, Streeter, uh, who has been with us for many, many years, and her grandkids, and also Deacon North Streeter, who is the grandson. And uh, most uh, we know the scriptures say that we should know the tree by the fruit it bears. And sometimes, uh, he, sometimes he out preach me. He's going to preach one day. <laughs> so Deacon North Streeter, will you come and have remarks there? And then we will move to the obituary. God bless you. I just want to thank the Lord for my Lord and Savior just being present here at this moment. And I thank you for that remark, my pastor. <laughs> well, like my mother said, my mother said, look, when I get a mic, she said, look, you better keep us just plain and short. Well, Mom, can I, can I talk all the way to 113, or can I talk to 100, and, or, or I can talk to 59 years? How do you want me to do it, Mom? <laughs> but one of the things, you know, about my grandmother, we, ha we had a shopping trip one day. And um, we was coming up to, to meet her after school. So while we was coming, I looked to my, my left. Then I see that walk that she took from her apartment to work. And I say, hold up. When I get out this car, I'm going to catch up with her because I want to see about that walk that she made on that showing all on the news and everything. So I saw how the way she walked through this way and cut through this way. So I caught her to the little cut way. I said, yeah, oh, that's how you do it, huh? You know, she took a little resting pod right there, then all of a sudden, then, then she made it to the school with it that day when we was going on a shopping trip that day, you know? And somehow, as we went on that shopping trip, hey, we got to the place, and then we turned around and looked for my grandma, but she was already gone. <laughs> so I said, where is grandma at? So she already got off the bus and already got a head order. And then, for you know, when we saw our grandmother, you know, when we coming back from, the, from shopping to get back on the bus, she already on the bus. <laughs> I said, Grandma, woo. I mean, you know, we was inside uh, uh, um, 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 the, the feeding place at Golden Parade. Oh, that's one of the special Golden Parade, you know. So many people just come there, you know, and greet her and everything. So we were on our way leaving out. 
She got in a little walking thing and almost ran me over. I said, Grandma, slow down, Grandma. But my grandma was real acne, though. I'm going to tell you, you know. And uh, I'm not going to tell you anything. I, I learned so much for her. And, and we talk about the Lord so much, so much. That's all we can talk about what God did. I came to my mother. I said, Grandma, I got problem right now. I got drug problem right now. When I came to her, she said, well, I don't have no money. I said, no, Grandma. I'm not coming for no money, Grandma. I'm just coming for you to pray for me. Because I had a drug problem. So she told me one thing, don't let the devil take you out. I said, okay then. That's good, that's good, that's good. But I just want to thank y'all for sharing and each and one of y'all coming out here, you know, saying, volunteered and all the church, my pastor, Pastor Hyde and, and Pastor White, you know, I think each one of the family members, all her friends, and all the love is here today. You know, we shared it in the Harbin Grove Shop. Oh, yeah. Because, look, I got something for you, child, Harbin Grove Shop. I always ask my grandmother, I said, Grandma, I was always play basketball, but I didn't know how to spin the ball on my finger. I said, Can you show me? And she started laughing. I said, That's okay, Grandma. I just want to thank you for this opportunity here. May the Lord be with each one of y'all. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. 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 Now, I told you I was saving the best for last. God bless you. Amen, amen. Thank you, uh, Deacon North Streeter, and uh, he's been a blessing to the Greater Good Samaritan Baptist Church. I tell you, sometimes he outpreached me, but... I know who to call, Mother Ida Sweeter, amen, and she knows how to pull him in line. <laughs> That's why I just say two minutes, because I know she had already told him. <laughs> God bless you. God bless you. All right. Well, we're coming to the obituary now, so if Virginia, if uh don't want to mess up your last name, Odapia, come now, the great-great-granddaughter will come in, and after that, we'll have a music selection, and then the eulogy by, uh, by our pastor, my pastor, uh, the Dr. Rudolph White. Can you hear me now? I'm tall, is that better? Yeah, the first couple paragraphs in the last page, just because everyone's touched on so many of her milestones. Um, remembering Virginia, we are here to celebrate the homegoing of Sister Virginia Lugenia McLaurin, born in Sherrall, South Carolina, to John Oliver Campbell and Flora Ella McQueen on March 12th, 1909, the date recorded in the Family Bible. Delivered by a midwife, she was the seventh of 11 children, nine girls and two boys. McLaurin's more than 50 descendants include her daughter, Ida Mae Streeter, her two sons, Willie Johnson Jr., who is deceased, and Felipe Cardoza, and his wife, Carla Cardoza. Grandchildren, Carolyn, Norris, Larry, and Ronnie Streeter, great-great-granddaughter, Chastity Virginia Votapia, and great-great-great-grandchildren, Hopi and Kateri. She has family in Shira, South Carolina, including nieces Mahalia Morrow and Listeria Lewis, and great niece Latanya Miller. Miss Virginia also had close friends who were like family, including Maisel Preston and her 11 children and grandchildren, including Cherie Brown, Iris Dorsey, the Tanton Sunthorn family, and the Mankar Esparza family. McLaurin shared memories of family life as sharecroppers in Shira. She was an avid learner and convinced her mother, her mother to let her go to school a year early, walking five miles each way. Um, in closing, in, two, in 2017, McLaurin donated a kerosene lamp that had belonged to her maternal grandparents, Sally and John Oliver McQueen, to the M the NMAAHC. It was added to their special collections. When McLaurin was not able to secure a formal identification card due to federal regulations, she spoke with the Washington Post columnist, Cortland Malloy Jr. Thanks to her adv advocacy, not only did she receive an ID for herself, the city changed the requirements for all DC residents over 70 years of age. 
Due to the pandemic, McLaurin did not get out much during the last few years of her life. However, she continued to attend church service by YouTube and kept in touch with family and friends by phone. Her memory and wit stayed sharp until the end, even in her final days. When anyone told her they loved her, she replied, I love you more. McLaurin died at home in hospice care on November 14, 2022. All right, thank you. God bless you. Thank you so very much. Now we'll have a music selection, uh, and after that, uh, Dr. White will come. Trying to turn me around. Oh, oh no. no! I said it ain't no use. Ain't nobody trying to turn me around. Oh no! Because my mind, mind is made, made up. Church, my soul, soul is heaven bound. It ain't no use. Ain't nobody trying to turn me around. Oh, no. I said it ain't no use. Ain't nobody trying to turn me around. Oh, no. I said it ain't no use. Ain't nobody trying to turn me around. Oh, no. Because my mind is made up. Yes, my soul is never down. It ain't no use. Ain't nobody trying to turn me around. Oh no, nobody can't turn me around. Nobody can't turn me around. I won't let nobody can't turn me around. Church, you can't stop me. You can't turn me around. I won't let nobody can't turn me around. I got to keep on working. Can't turn me around. I got to keep on working. Can't turn me around. See the devil can't stop me. Can't turn me around. See the devil can't stop me. Can't turn me around. Don't nobody stop me. Can't turn me around. I won't let nobody. Can't turn me around. I want to be like yo. Can't turn me around. See he kept the faith. Can't turn me around. He stayed in the race. Can't turn me around. He didn't let nobody. Can't turn me around. I won't let nobody. Can't turn me around. Because my mind is made up. Church, my soul is heaven bound. It ain't no use. Ain't nobody trying to turn me around. Oh no, nobody can't turn me around. Nobody can't turn me around. Church, you stop me. Can't turn me around. The devil can't stop me. Can't turn me around. See, the preacher can't stop me. Can't turn me around. Even the deacons can't stop me. Can't turn me around. I won't let no. 
nobody you can't turn me around. I won't let nobody you can't turn me around because my, my mind is made up. Yes, my soul is heaven bound. It ain't no use. Nobody trying to turn me around. Oh, no. Well, a lot has been said about this great lady that I think I have about 15 minutes. I'm not upset about what you've done because I believe everybody in here ought to have something to say about Mother McLaurin. And I come before you now as her pastor, and pastor of a lady that uh, has done so many wonderful things and She's one that I believe the Lord is really excited about her being one of his children. In Psalm. 116 and the 15th verse. I found something that uh, I felt described uh, Mother McLaurin. Well, let me get let me get uh, the fifteenth verse and just put a heading on it, and then I'll uh, uh, go inside of what was going on in the mind of this psalmist. In that 15th verse of the 116th Psalm, it says, Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saint. And the Spirit is just filling me now because uh, ever since Mother McLaurin uh, left this world, the Lord has been feeding me various things because of recognizing 
all that he was doing in the life of Mother McLaurin. And if I had to put a tag on this particular passage of scripture at this particular time, it would be a precious death. I've heard a lot of things that have been said about her and, and God knows how much more that can be said as to what kind of person she was and how she uh, drew the attention of others around her. A precious death, for it says, in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. I want you to note, this is not saying everybody is precious in the sight of the Lord. That 15th verse says, is the death of his saints. Precious in the sight of the Lord. You have to be a devoted person. It means life has become acceptant to God in Christ. In the sight of the Lord. He has recognized something special in the sight of the individual that he has chosen to be one of his children. Something special. She was different and it means that we have to recognize who we are if we are going to be precious in the sight of the Lord. Everywhere we went as far as with Mother McLaurin and going out to dinner after church or something and people will just invade the table where we were seated. And it was not because of Pastor White. Yes, they would invade the table because they recognized a lady that they had seen pass uh, dancing with the president and, and other great people in the land today and so one lady said to her what is your secret and mother McLaurin you know how she is she would just simply look at you and say secret she said, I have no secret. She said, I treat people like they like to be treated, and they in return will do the same for me. And uh, the lady looked at me and said, uh, what do you think about it? And Mother McLaurin just simply butted in like she generally would do. And, and she said, this is my pastor. And oh, you need to come to hear him preach. She removed the whole idea of what was happening that was really centered around herself. And she decided to let somebody else know that uh, uh, 
you treat people like God wants them to be treated. And uh, people will treat you in like manner. Precious in the sight of the Lord is how the Lord looked upon Mother Magdalene. And how was that in John 13 and 34? It simply says that we need to be a people who love one another as he loves us. And you must love one another. It is a, a game. The Lord uh, made it clear that he had a people that he planned to live with him throughout eternity. And therefore, he had planned that they would be a certain way. And you had to be a saint. Note what he says here in this verse. Not just a person or someone who think highly of themselves, but he made it clear that you had to be a saint, one precious in the sight of the Lord. Not one doing in and every kind of thing, but the saint was the one that would receive an eternal home with him, according to John's writing in the 14th chapter. And Jesus talks about how he's preparing a place for people who uh, love like he loved, live like he lived. Not, not like people are doing now. I, I listened to the news this morning and, and I just got uh, totally upset with uh, how people today are treating each other. They can't go to heaven. Uh, but she's already set. She said she has what God has accepted. He sent people into the world so that they could be made to serve him and live for him like Jesus lived. They were to follow Jesus' example and become something precious in his sight, not in the sight of others. Uh, uh, the saint had an eternal home. It was, it is God's house. It's, it's where God lived. The father of the home. And Paul declared something that there is a crown laid up for me. When you live this precious life like Jesus. You can't treat people like you see on the news now. And people just do a lot of things uh, to uh, cause problems in other people's lives. You can't be accepted by God by killing folk or doing various things that you see and hear in the news. There's no place in heaven for this kind of people. Nothing laid up for them. And according to 2 Timothy 4 and 6 through 8, uh, he makes it clear to us. Uh, Paul says to us that, listen, uh, I fought a good fight. He, he, he makes it clear that there is a life that you really need 
to recognize and know that God himself has already fixed a way for you to live with him. And if you don't go the way that he has so selected you to go, then heaven is not your home. And there's another place called hell. I'm saying here now that we are recognizing something in our miss, and we have to make sure that we recognize it clearly. This is not just a body laying here. It has a title. The Lord has made it clear that she is a saint because of how she lived for him. How many saints do you have? You can just about count them in the church. Now, I know I'm meddling, and I, I want to get away from that, but I want everybody to understand that to be a saint, you have to know how to treat other people. To be a saint, you have to be one that God has used down through the years and help you to help others. Uh, the world is messed up. And I didn't like the idea of Mother McLaurin going home, but then I heard Paul as he made it clear to us that that day is coming, and in Second Timothy, the sixth verse, uh, the uh, sixth verse of uh, Second Timothy and the fourth chapter, I am now ready to be offered up. How many of us can sit here and say that I am a ready saint? And you know, uh, I, I think I'll be talked about after this, but uh, I want you to know that this is a purpose for her being here in our midst. And I don't care where you go, people recognize that there's something about her. And they love it so that they would like to be like her. And she, she just think it is just something that I live. It's not something special to me. It's ordinary. I treat people like they love to be treated. And I have a lot of friends, and like even a member of the Globe Trotters here today, coming from a distance from somewhere to let everybody know that she is special. The president and his wife could, in the White House could just have a few dance steps with her. Nothing wrong with dancing if it's right. Uh, I got to go. And I want you to know that I hope I've just left something in your mind. Are you a saint? Remember what the word says, that the Lord recognizes people that are precious in his sight if you are a what? Saint. And if you're not, you have a major problem 
with God who sent you into this world and we come to be something that he has selected us to be and to live. Ah, don't turn the news on early in the morning. That's, and, and I know I may have some news meter people here, but they have a job. Their job is to tell you what's going on around you and in the world. What do you think God feels about all of what's going on? Can you say I am one of his saints, a person that lives totally for the Lord and living according to his word and carrying out his wisdom for others who need help and, and the list goes on. How many are sitting here? Well, are you a saint? But Paul said the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. What do you mean you fought a good fight? You, you see people on the TV, they're never about killing each other fighting the fight, but when you think of what is being said, I fought a good fight. The best fight you can fight today is a fight with the devil, because he's the one that's killing everybody and doing a lot of terrible things. So I got to let you go because you got a gate time that you got to get to. But I just want to tell you, that's why the Lord has put us in the midst of this once used to be a house for Sister McLaurin. She lived in it, and she made people happy. Like she said, I don't have to be special. I just treat people like the Lord wants them to be treated. That's how she got all that fame and glory. And even do a little step in the White House. Because she wanted to represent God. And I am finished. The morticians are ready to come because you need to find out. I try to explain what is a saint, a person acknowledged as holy or virtuous and typically regarded as being a person that God wants them to be. That's what this is all about. She can't come back because where she's going, God has already prepared for her. And we are thankful to the Lord. So I need to turn this over to the mortician I had some things I wanted to say, but the time was running out, and, and we got to go. And so now, uh, I'll place it over into the hand of the mortician, and he's going to give us some instructions as to uh, what we need to do in order to get where we need to go. Good afternoon and praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Wayne, thank you so much for an elegant word and the eulogy for this wonderful woman. Those of you all that are attending the internment site at Glenwood, we encourage you to go directly to your automobiles, turn your high beams and flashers on. Those that are pallbearers, we're going to have you two assemble that are designated. We need six. 
and some of the ladies, could you please come and take some of the beautiful floral arrangements out? Thank you so much. God bless you.